Cable Liner This is the chart showing the four different types of cable-propelled transit systems. In this chapter video, we will focus on the cable liner. These are the locations of the different types of mass transportation systems. A cable liner can be below the ground or above the ground. This is an example of a cable liner above the ground, while this is an example of a cable liner below the ground. Let us look at the history of the cable liner. This is an early version of a passenger train powered by a steam engine in 1829. The train would be popular as a mode of transport for long distances. It would not be so useful in crowded and dense cities where a train needs to board and deboard passengers often at short distances. Eleven years later, after the train, the first version of a different kind of train that was propelled by a cable was installed in 1840 in London. It was called the London Wagonway. It would later serve as a basis for further development of the two types of ground roadway transit, the cable liner and the funicular. You can see the cable here wrapped around a big pulley called a bullwheel. The cable is attached underneath the wagon. This is a station where passengers disembark and embark. This station may have contained the steam engine to power the rotation of the bullwheels. The other station is located farther ahead somewhere here. You can see an operator on the ground holding a lever and an operator on the train also holding a lever. Both operators control the wagonway system. 28 years after the first wagonway was installed, New York, New Orleans, and San Francisco followed with their own and improved versions of wagonways. During these times, the car was not yet invented, so wagonway continued to be the name. In the San Francisco wagonway, a trench was built underneath the road. This is where the cable would be placed. A clamp attached below the train would clamp on the moving cable to travel. It would unclamp to stop and deboard passengers. A lever controls the clamping and unclamping of the grip. The cable is being continuously rotated around a loop along a fixed route by engines in the powerhouse. The powerhouse contains the propulsion and other machineries of the system. There are three routes that are being preserved up to the present for touristic purposes. These are the red, green, and blue lines that you see here on this map. The machineries have been preserved in its original form as much as possible in the original powerhouse. You can see here that the underground cables below the road that is being circulated by the wheels in the powerhouse. The powerhouse now contains a museum and other amenities. In the background, you can see souvenir shops and places to eat and drink. This wagonway is the only one of its kind in the world and is a top tourist attraction in the city of San Francisco. It was in 1886 the first vehicle that people would refer to as a car was invented. It would be sometime in the beginning of the 1900s that the San Francisco wagonway updated to its present day name, the San Francisco cable car. At this point, we now have two CPT systems in the world that are called cable cars. One is on the air and one is on the ground. Most people will call aerial cable cars by its abbreviated name, cable car. The cable car in San Francisco is the only one of its kind in the world. Thus, the confusion will only be to a very few. After San Francisco, 40 cities installed its own cable cars over the next several decades. Sometime in 1882, at the height of the popularity of the cable cars, the tram was invented in Bremen, Germany. The vehicle or train set would be powered by an electric motor that was already invented decades earlier in 1834. The source of electricity would be overhead electrical wires. During this time of the ground cable car and the tram, subways already operated below the ground in cities using the same rail-based technology. The competition of two technologies were on the ground, namely, remotely powered cable car and the internally powered tram. 
one would win the competition and make the other obsolete. LRTs and trams using overhead power lines would consistently continue to be used up to the present time. More than 300 cities in the world use trams and LRTs. Meanwhile, the cable car continued to decline in use. The second to the last cable liner survivor in New Zealand closed in 1957. Only San Francisco would survive. It survived for historical reasons and not economic viability. The tram was the clear winner because it was simpler and cheaper to build, maintain, and operate. The following is the story of how the San Francisco cable car survived. By 1947, there were only two remaining cities out of the 40 cities in the world that had cable cars, Dunedin and San Francisco. During the same year in 1947, the mayor of San Francisco decided to get rid of the cable car. The citizens fought back by mounting a campaign to save the cable car. A referendum was made. The preservation of the cable cars won by a landslide victory. San Francisco cable car is actually a cable liner traveling on the ground. For various technical reasons, it cannot be installed in modern times. It has a low capacity and is expensive to operate and maintain. It cannot compete with trams, LRTs, and MRTs. The San Francisco cable car has survived and continues to operate only because it is subsidized. City buses and the subway charge only two US dollars. It is more comfortable, much faster, and can travel longer distances. The fare for the cable car that can travel only 15 kph is $8. In some cases, Uber is even cheaper. Even with a fare of $8 and the high ridership from tourists, it is still not profitable. The subsidy provided to the cable car makes economic sense. It generates indirect income to the city that is many times more than the subsidy provided by the city government. 25 million tourists visit San Francisco yearly, pumping $10 billion to its local economy. The cable car is one of its top tourist attractions and among the most unique tourist attractions in the world. The cable car was born in 1840. The overhead electrical cables disrupted the cable technology of the cable car. It was gradually suffocated until it died in 1957. It was only as recent as 1999 that cable cars would be resurrected from the grave. This time, it would be placed above the ground. It was installed in Las Vegas in 1999 by Doppelmayr. It would call the system a cable liner. In summary, the cable car was born in 1840, died in 1957, and resurrected in 1999. The resurrected cable car has been so successful since it was installed by Doppelmayr in 1999. About 30 installations have been installed since 1999. Viewers of this video series will certainly ask the question, if a cable liner is so good, why so few are installed? This is because there are 500 rail-based mass transportation systems in the world today installed over the last 159 years, whereas there are about 30 cable liner systems installed so far. But these have been installed only in the last 23 years. Furthermore, it does not include funiculars, which are the cable cousins of the cable liners. Cable liner is a new type of mass transportation that only started in 1999. BRT, MRT, LRT, trams, and monorail had fewer installations in the first 23 years. As an example, MRT only had 13 installations in its first 59 years. Also, when people see the six systems shown in this page in person, they would think it is an LRT or subway. Very few people are aware that trains above the ground in some cities are pulled by cables or that they can be pulled by cables to move. It was only Doppelmayr who coined the term cable liner to refer to this type of system. This was to differentiate cable liners pulled by cables from trains pushed through an internal electrical motor. Other manufacturers have installed cable liners under a different name. 
For example, Leitner Poma calls its train pulled by a cable as a mini metro. These are some of its installations. The best example to show the mechanisms of the latest model of a cable liner is the one at the Doha airport which opened in 2016. The cable liner travels inside the airport building on both sides. Part of the propulsion mechanism of the cable liner is located somewhere below the train. The ride is very smooth and quiet because the tires are made of rubber and not of steel as in LRTs. There is no sound from propulsion motors and the grinding of the wheels against steel tracks as in an LRT. The airport passengers in the airport building are not disturbed by the cable liner traveling inside the building. Mechanisms of a cable liner These are the mechanisms under the train set that carries a total of 190 passengers. These are the tires that carries the weight of the train and glides over the tracks. The train set is pulled by this cable. This is a close-up view of the grip. The spring facilitates the clamping and unclamping of the grip. The guide wheels lessens the swaying movement of the train as it travels. This is a detailed comparison of what is underneath a cable liner and an LRT. The parts underneath a cable liner are much fewer and less complex. The bogey of a cable liner is composed of four tires, the chassis, and other small minor parts. The propulsion machineries to pull the cable are in the station. Even the brakes to decelerate and stop the train are also in the station. Thus, the rubber tires in the cable liner do not grind against the tracks as it slows down to a complete stop. There is less noise and the tires last a long time. In an LRT, the bogies are under the train. They consist of so many parts that are all under the train set. This is the train set of the Doha cable liner. Because it runs inside the airport building, there is no need for air conditioning units that are usually placed on top of the roof. Instead of the aircon machineries, the roof of the train is made of glass for more views. There is a fan unit where cool air is drawn from inside the airport building. It is then circulated continuously into the cabin. Types of cable liner travel configurations. These are the basic parts of a single lane cable liner. These are the cables, rail and train set. The mechanisms are very similar to all types of CPTs. A drive wheel is located on one side while the opposite side, it is just a free wheel. This is how the propulsion in a cable liner works. This is the pulling cable that propels the train in a forward motion. It loops around the freewheeling bull wheels back towards the motors at the drive station. The motor rotates the bull wheel, then continually circulates the cable in a loop. The grip of the train set unclamps or clamps to the cable at any time to deboard and board passengers. After all have boarded, the train clamps back to the cable to resume travel. The forward and return cables can be seen in this inset photo of an actual installation. If more passenger capacity is needed, a double or dual lane cable liner would be needed. In this configuration, there will be two tracks and two drive motors. More train sets can be deployed. Another configuration with increased capacity is to increase the drive motors from two to four. These are the four drive motors to rotate the four drive wheels. The four drive wheels will be matched by four free wheels on the opposite side, somewhere in the middle of the line. Shown here is only a one-track configuration with four drive motors. There are many configurations to increase capacity and length of the line. This is the schematic diagram of this configuration. A similar experience of this configuration is the Caracas cable liner. The drawing has only three stations, while the actual Caracas cable liner is designed to have five stations. There are several different configurations of a cable liner. In this chapter, we will show four configurations and photos of its actual installation. These are the single lane shuttle, dual lane shuttle, pinched loop, and the single lane shuttle with bypass. 
This single lane shuttle is the most basic configuration consisting of a train set that goes back and forth on a single lane. This double lane shuttle uses two train sets with its respective tracks. The two train sets go back and forth on two separate lanes. This is a pinched loop configuration. It uses several haul rope loops which adjoin and overlap one another at the stations. The train switches between the haul ropes, creating a synchronized circular flow of trains around the system. An example of a pinched loop configuration is in Caracas, Venezuela. This is a single lane with bypass cable liner. Only two trains are used between stations. They do not bump into each other because of this bypass. This is used in the three-station cable liner line in Venice, Italy. An example cable liner where you can see the bullwheel drive mechanisms along the route is the Miami International Airport cable liner. This is a video of the drive mechanism that you can see from a road. If this will be installed in a Philippine city, it will be a tourist attraction, just like other CPTs in which the drive mechanisms can be seen. These are more sample cable liner installations and specs. This cable liner that will be operational in 2022 will be the fastest cable liner at 50 kph with a higher capacity of 170 passengers per train set. This cable liner in the Moscow International Airport goes through a tunnel. This is a cable liner that connects the airport to the Oakland-San Francisco subway line. This is a cable liner in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is in the Mexico International Airport. This is in the Toronto International Airport. These are more details of the cable liner at the Toronto International Airport. This is a drive station that contains the mechanisms to pull the train set. At the same time, it is the facility to maintain the trains. Unlike an LRT, there is no need for an off-site depot. This is the cable liner at the Birmingham International Airport. This is the Mandalay cable liner in Las Vegas, USA. These are selected cable liner installations with their corresponding specifications. This will indicate that cable liners can have different configurations and specs to suit the needs of the customer.